Welcome to the Queen Anne's County Board of Education work session for June the 16th, 2021. Uh, motion going to uh, close session? Yes, motion to move into closed session pursuant to the general provisions of Article 3-305 and 3-104. I move for the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County to meet in a closed session to consider matters that relate to the negotiations and to perform an administrative function. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 We'll be back at five o'clock. Thank you. 2021, can we stand for the pledge? Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, you've had a chance to look at uh, June 9th closed and open uh, meeting. Uh, has everybody had a chance to review those work sessions and uh, the closed sessions for a work session? Mm -hmm. Yes. I have a motion. A motion to approve. Second. Second. All those in favor, aye. 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 Ayes have it, thank you. Okay, I have approval of the agenda. Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to amend this, the present agenda to change 7.01 to reconvene in closed session? Second. I have a motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to accept the amended agenda? Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Okay, we're in the presentation um, 3 01, graduation credits. Mr. Smith, Dr. Salins, Good evening. executive team, and our uh, board members. I'm here to present on the graduation credit requirements. My name is Michael Page. I am a supervisor of curriculum instruction. I oversee environmental literacy, health, physical education, and science. Today's purpose is to inform the board of the recent changes made to Comar, and that is the graduation requirements for publics, public high schools in Maryland. And these particular requirements are uh, for our graduates of 2025. So today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna review the changes that occurred at the May 25th uh, state school board meeting. Uh, and then we're going to review what those uh, implications have on our school system. So uh, as you can see, the, the board um, has uh, changed math to us go down the row. English stayed the same, math changed to four credits, science stayed the same, social studies stayed the same, physical education stayed the same, health changed to one full credit, and that is due to the amount of house bills uh, and senate bills that have been put forward the past couple years that require us to teach additional content. Um, and so they moved that to uh, one credit, then fine arts remain the same. There was a, a technical name change for uh, our computer science, engineering, and technology education. It used to just say technology education. Now students can take one of those three uh, in order to earn that credit. Then there are additional credits that they need to be able to um, uh, take and that's world language. The change with world language is that they needed to be a consecutive language, right? So if I take Spanish one, I need to take Spanish two. There were some cases where students were taking Spanish one and French one, and then they would get the credit uh, that way. Uh, we generally don't have that uh, that case happen here, but in some cases it does happen. So this particular change requires them to take consecutive languages. Uh, the next one is the CTE completion. Those credits do vary, um, so we don't list all of those pathways out there, but they range from four to, I think one is can be as many as 10. Uh, so they, they do have a, a 
different credits. Um, and then they, um, as you can see, they reduced the elective credits to 2.5. And so the minimal credit requirement that the state is now requiring students to have is 22. Now when we go to and look at our um, current graduation requirements, uh, you can see them here uh, and these are the updates that we will need to make. Um, so here, these are the recommended Queen Anne's County Public Schools graduation requirements, and these are the requirements that we are suggesting and, and bringing forward to you all um, uh, so that we can meet the state requirement, but also ours. So we are looking to maintain English at four, math will need to move to four, science will remain three, social studies will remain three, Physical education, we are going to move to one. Um, this is the requirement at the state is still a, a half, but we are, we are looking to move physical education uh, to one. Uh, the next one is health uh, education, and that will move to one. Fine arts will remain one. Uh, computer science and engineering and technology, obviously the name change. And then what we have done is we have uh, reduced the number of electives that the students have to take, and therefore our total number of credits that students will have to um, earn in order to graduate from Queen Anne's County Public Schools would be 26. So we would not change that number. The only numbers that would change are the actual credits above that. Mr. Page, can I ask you a question? Yes, ma'am. And I'm sure you're going to hear this from a lot of parents. What extra math courses do we offer that would satisfy this? I mean, once someone has, say someone is not going on to algebra, geometry, right. you know, AP, you know, one and two, you know, BC, one and two. So what other math can be taken? So I'm, I'm not going to be able to list all those oh, okay. math courses um, just because but there I, is a I litany. don't know them. There's a, there's but, a large. But I would say that the, the past practice of our high schools was that students were taking four credits okay. already. Of math. Um, yes, ma'am. That's okay. right. So our past practice was that they were, they were taking a fourth math. I was just worried that there wasn't going to be enough math classes to satisfy this requirement. I, I do believe that that department okay. is is uh, does not require any extra is for for that requirement. We're, Thank you. We're currently uh, meeting that requirement. Thank you. I think that there may be some changes, uh, and I, I I would. And this is going to start with freshmen. I can reach out to Mrs. Right. Smith, but um, yes. Okay. But that, be that, in the program of study, all of the classes. All the classes are a program of study. Okay. Yes, and this does, that's a good clarification yes, point. Sorry, this is for the cohort 2025, which is our incoming ninth grade students. Yes. So those students who are currently in 10th, 11th, and 12th grade or going into 10th, 11th, 12th grade, their requirements stay the same. Okay. So they won't have to go back and take an additional right. uh, half a credit in PE or health or anything to meet the requirements. Their requirements were, you know, yes. grandfathered in on that aspect. Thank you so that's that. a very good clarification that we're going to have to communicate to, you know, our, our so staff and the, community. The people are there, but grandfathered in, the new ones coming in will be at this, mm -hmm. this level. Right. Yeah. Yes, and I failed to mention that. That was on my first slide. No, that that's okay. This is, this is for our upcoming freshmen. I didn't want any parents out there panicking already no that they're, they're, tenth, they're going into 10th grade student. It doesn't have enough credits to graduate. And don't some students come out of middle school with high school credits in math and stuff, a couple of them? That's correct. Has been past practice, mm -hmm. yes. And there's, what, four, uh, four a semester or a quarter? I mean, I mean when, when I say 26, if a student did a full class every time, they'd have, 32 they have, 30, they have 32 opportunities. Yes, sir. Plus, coming out of middle school, they might have a couple. So mm -hmm. you know, 26 is, you'd have a lot of choices. Correct. So some of the next steps and some of these things have already taken place. Um, uh, we, we met as a high school committee last Friday to really go through and discuss these, these changes. Um, and so we met with uh, 
the high school principals, the academic deans, uh, several of the assistant principals, the lead counselors, um, and um, all supervisors. And Dr. Salins was there, Ms. Pauls was there, and we kind of talked through these changes and uh, kind of reviewed those. So we are already in communication with the principals, going through the process of making the changes for these, these uh, requirements. Uh, we've met with several of the staff members who, who programs might have to change a little bit due to the requirements. Uh, so we're meeting with them to discuss uh, some of those things. We will have to amend the 21-22 high school program of study um, because we have already published that and we've already put that out to our families. So the Department of Curriculum and Instruction will be putting together uh, kind of a amendment that will articulate those changes for the freshmen who are uh, coming into our high schools. Um, communication to the families and students is next. So we're already kind of in the process of communicating some of these uh, changes and um, making some small changes to our programs to assist with a few of the, the things that, uh, some of the challenges that we might be facing. Uh, we're gonna have to do a needs assessment because some of the, you know, obviously our, our two health and PE programs are gonna be extended a little bit longer, so we're gonna need to look into if there are materials of instruction that we might need. We also may need to start having this discussion about staffing, which we have. We kind of have identified, identified some of those needs um, and then curriculum development. And then we're gonna need to continue to monitor these students as a cohort as they go forward. So um, as we had said earlier, this is only, these changes are for our students who are coming up as freshmen, but we'll continue to monitor the students who are um, uh, you know, sophomores, juniors and seniors. Actually, to be proactive, some of those students who have not taken the uh, PE in health in ninth grade, we're actually going to offer some opportunities this summer for some of those students. So all those students have been identified, and there's a plan in place. Right. Do you all have any questions or concerns? Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. When you say staffing, do you feel we have adequate staff to, I mean, I know this is ninth grade, but yeah. I'd probably Dr. Sale is too, uh, asking this question. And when I say staffing, then we get into budgetary issues too. Um, are we comfortable with this? Well, it's definitely going to impact um, when you move, you know, from the half credit where you could pair them together mm -hmm. because you would have a half credit in health and half credit in PE. You could pair them together very easily. Now there's two full credits there. You're obviously impacting staffing. Um, and actually you're impacting space as well um, so we're at one high school there you know is plenty of opportunity and space there but at the other high school there is not so facilities wise it's an impact on that um, and it's something that we're just getting into and as Michael said um, looking at you know a needs assessment would you know looking at materials of instruction but also looking at spacing and staffing we're always all would be an impact as well so um, you know, this is gonna be new. It's gonna be a little bit of growing pains until we can get to the other side of it, especially when we have, you know, three classes of students who the majority of them have had those credits, but we do have some and we have those numbers, about 300 kids, I guess, across the district who still need to get that half a credit. In and then we have some PE and health, yes, it's right. Around. And it's then right. we still have, you know, this whole incoming freshman class that we wanna to try to get them to meet their requirements. Um, so we did look at it to try to be strategic and focus on the PE for our freshmen as their incoming ninth grade and then looking at the health credit for their 10th grade year so we're trying to strategize and work around that to see if that's going to be a good fit um, you know to move them through um, to kind of doubling up on that credit essentially any other members thank you thank you thank you Okay, we have uh, action items, uh, Power School Performance Matters. Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Salins, 
members of the school board and executive team. My name is Julie Forbes. I'm the supervisor of accountability, assessment, and data management. And I'm here this evening to present the Power School Performance Matters Assessment Analytics Choice Contract. Um, this is a year-long contract uh, beginning on August 1st of 2021. The fiscal impact is $74,451.03. And the budget source is the ESSER II grant. Um, the Performance Matters system is how um, we administer our local assessments and also how we analyze data and look at it um, down to the teacher level, principal level, and at the district level as well. And we've been using the system, we'll be entering into the 10th year um, with this system. So we've had it for, for quite a while. So we've had this for 10 years. Yeah, yeah we're going into the 10th year, that's and correct. it's worked well both, with, I mean, this year we're virtual learning. Mm -hmm but next year we'll be back in school, yes. so it's gonna work out fine with that. Yes, and it's gonna be um, an extremely helpful tool just in terms of really gauging where our students are and how we can best support them by the use of the local assessments, looking at those assessment results down to the standard and really supporting our students with that. And it's a very user-friendly data dashboard um, that our staff is quite familiar with. So, and it could actually do individual students too. I mean, mm -hmm. not, not a group it's gonna do. Yep. When we have, uh, you know, like our summer school somebody is falling mm -hmm. behind, we'll have all that to yep. come up with. Okay. Absolutely, and we are using it for the summer school assessments as well to capture um, that assessment information. And that's a very appropriate use of your ESSER funds because it really is looking at learning loss. It gives us the ability to identify the extent of that learning loss. Any gaps we have. In yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Do I have any other board questions? Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to accept the Power School Performance Matters Assessment Analytics Choice contract for one year and fiscal impact dollar amount of $74,451.03. Budget sources ESSER two grant funds. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Have it. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Master plan. Good evening, President Smith, members of the board, Dr. Salins, and executive team. For the record, my name is Carla Poulin. I am serving as the interim chief operating officer, and I'm here this evening to request your approval for the Educational Facilities Master Plan for 2021. If you'll recall, at the meeting on June 2nd, we reviewed what the Educational Facilities Master Plan is, why it's important, and then you received a draft copy of that document. So I'm here to request approval for the final that is due to the State Maryland Department of Planning before July 1st. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have on the draft document. You've also received a copy of the final this evening. If there are any changes, we'll make those modifications before it's sent to the state and we'll update your binders as well. I had a few questions if you don't mind. Sure. Are Some you of looking at the draft document? Can I yes, I am. Okay. I, yeah, that's what I, I, I wrote all over it. Okay. Um, so some of the changes that we have in here that was done through MSDE, calling career technology. Correct. That's career correct. Technolo technical education. Page career technology. technology. Uh, page 20. That was the first big one. The other ones were just small small things, um, which I understood about the individual le electronic learning devices calling it that, I mean, yes. Yeah. Um, secondary transition services and linkages, that's MSD, that's on page 21, uh, A, AA2. You call it secondary transition services and linkage linkages. Yes, and this was, we also reach out to our curriculum partners. So okay. Mrs. Smith was able to take a look at this portion of the document under special education and update it with some of the newest information from MSDE. So then in page 22, that's why the change on the program for academic community success. That's correct. Okay, that, that's yes. I figured that. I just, and I knew the ARISE program had to be re, renamed. Yes. I bring up um, to Dr. Salins, we hadn't discussed talking about a deputy superintendent of instruction rather than just calling that person assistant superintendent. Um, 
I, I don't know why we switch over to deputy, but assistant superintendent, I, you know, is there a reason for that verbiage? I mean, what are I'm we not doing? sure. I think that was just previously used. Um, and so my recommendation would be the assistant superintendent language. So going back to assistant superintendent of instruction? Yes. Is everyone okay with, okay with that? I mean, yeah, I, if, doc, if Dr. Salins is fine, I have no problem with okay. that. And I understood about the ratios and uh, the numbers and all that had to be clarified. That was, uh, I believe that, I think that was the last. I see the appeals were switched over for, to the chief operating officer. Yes. Okay. And not HR? Patreon. Yeah. I guess because it was talking about the distance criteria for walking. That's why. It's Is that under the transportation section? Yes. Mm -hmm. So that it went to them. Okay. What page yes. is that, Tim? Mm. 41. Since it's under transportation, that's why it was mm -hmm. correct. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. That's all I had. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me the time. I guess it's just a, it, since it's a major number, it's probably just a typo. Num page number 25, yes. staffing ratios. We're going from 45, 60 to 45. That's just because we had the wrong numbers in there last year. I can check again. This was one that we allowed our curriculum partners to take a look at, and they help us to update this every year. I'll definitely reach out to Mrs. Smith to see if we can assure that that is 45, but I know that that was a correction that was made. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, when you go 4,560 to 45, that's, I'm, I'm assuming, was a era in past, not... Oh, no, it was actually 60 last year. Oh, okay. And it was reduced to 45 this year. Oh, okay. So that's yes. going from 60 to 45. So that, in other words, other one's going from... Uh, 130 to 231 what on line D. D, what's that? Page 25. One? Same thing. It crossed out. It crossed out 130 and, and crossed 850. out 850. We're now at 231. It was now at 231. Yep, I'll definitely make sure that I verify those numbers in the final. And we'll just double check those in the, in the final as well to make sure that they translated correctly. And, and you know, is that state standard or word? That's the numbers we're feeling comfortable with, or you know, I guess some of the thing on that. And then I go to page 28. I'm just looking at this. It looks like our uh, special needs is dropping, but we have a. I know when our budget keeps going up, is because they're more intense, less maybe less students but more intense is that where we're seeing our budget keep going up and our numbers coming down a little bit i believe i wouldn't want to speak for mrs smith but i believe that's probably part of it but again we'll double check these numbers again just mm -hmm. to make sure that it's so, I mean, we are in, interpreting in 17 them correctly. in 17 we were 882 and now we're down to 828 yes. but i know our every year we have major issues especially the middle and the end of the year by transferring money to you know that and the same thing on page 29 the very last um, bullet item as of October so many families have elected to continue receiving services from infant and toddlers it's it's confusing yeah. the, mm -hmm. your total cost when you see especially in the other placements non-public mm -hmm. settings um, you'll see that there was six students in 2017 to 10 mm -hmm. that that's a huge expense right. right there so that potentially so could six be to ten, right yeah Never made, that's major money right exactly every that one student could mm -hmm. potentially is more, much more, more than, than, than a, a gen ed uh, student than a whole, whole yeah. class yeah. or something because it's non public yeah, I, 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 that's a good point six to ten is a big difference and we had that jump from 2015 to 2000 2016 and mm -hmm. even from then to now mm -hmm. you can definitely see yeah the services on on a non-public app their costs have risen right. significantly in the last you were around years. 300 thousand 350 and we're what now 900 thousand in this current budget um, mrs. towers would have yeah. to answer that <laughs> It's substantial. Non-public placements. Do you know the call, the uh, budget line item for non-public school settings for? It is little, uh, right around a million dollars. Yeah. Yeah. We were just talking about the cost from 2017 to 2020 has significantly risen as it relates to non-public school placements. We've seen an 
increase there. So that potentially could be that, the money that, 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 that makes good yeah. sense. Okay, and then my last question on page 71, private non-public schools. Yes. It shows you where we are. Is that up or down? Like, is you know, we, I see, you know, four schools here, a total of 451 students. And I know we lost students this year. We did. Is this number up? It's definitely up. Um, Much? I mean, just, I mean, a couple hundred? I see it. Yes. So see. if you look at the bottom line, mm -hmm. Um, actually, that's 2018, 2019. I'll get you the jump from last year because those numbers are new. And just give you an idea, it's definitely up. And I want to say it was up pretty significantly. These are the numbers that we pull from some of the state documentation that they do for um, non-public. I'll get you the exact number so you know where because, we are. You know, I, I, I know personally, and I know I've talked to parents, you know, when we did not, and the state, did not go back to school, some private schools were opening up, and that just made a big difference in our uh, decrease in enrollment. Well, you're looking at a, over 120 students mm -hmm. increase. Mm -hmm. Can't, I mean, K through 12 and 12, 9 through 12, I mean, so 100 students. Yeah, if you look at, that's, a, that's a good significant, that's a significant number. number. If you look at page 72 and 73, it will show you the differences from last year to this year and the increase in numbers. Ah, look at that. Okay. So there was, when we went to visit Sellersville, they were saying that there was a new private school that there is up in Sellersville. So that one is Faith Christian School. And their enrollment, I recall when doing this, I think they were probably 50 additional students this year, if not more, when looking at their enrollment. And what about Chesapeake Christian? Because I know they have a bus that leaves Queen Anne's County um, and travels to Easton. I don't know about the out-of-county placements, the ones that actually leave our county to go to another. So we only take a look at, at the, We're just looking at Yes. Okay. We're not looking at, at Kent School or anybody. We're just looking at... Yes. Just the ones in Queen Anne's County. Okay. Those are my few questions. Is anybody else? No. Now, we have a couple questions as far as verifying numbers. Yes. I heard you say, can we... Would it be prudent to do this next meeting, but we don't meet again until July the seventh. Seventh, or do you need it? I mean, we what's where's our timeline on this thing right now? Correct. So we do need to submit this by July first. But what we could do is to potentially, if it were in your purview to do, um, approve it this evening with the clarifications of numbers coming to you, and then to assure that they're correct. And so we can give you that updated information before it's submitted on July 1st, but the approval would be given tonight with just the subsequent information coming Does to you. Do you feel comfortable doing that? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we'll... Um, Motion to approve the um, educational facility master plan with the caveat of the updated numbers so they can be submitted by July 1st to the state. And second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Puller. Thank you. Thanks so much, Mr. Puller. You're welcome. That one's done. That one go. I think the next one may be me as well. <laughs> she said I'm not going too far. You're the next one too, okay. <laughs> I am the next one too. <laughs> So I'm going to put on my facilities planner hat for this one. And what we are requesting in this action item is a modification to our CIP, our capital improvement program requests for fiscal year 20, as well as for fiscal year 22. So in fiscal year 20, we were allotted funding from the state for two projects for partial roof replacements. One at Bayside Elementary School, one at Kent Island Elementary School. Over the past year, we initiated design documents. We had the bidding process in the March and April timeframe. And if you recall what happened to the construction industry and what was happening in shipping during that time frame, our bids came in at more than double the budget. Therefore, we don't have the available funding to do them. 
the funding, since it is fiscal year 20, will expire on June 30th. So in working with the state, what they have recommended is that we ask to rescind those funds from fiscal year 20. That will go into our reserved appropriation fund. It will be allotted for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. And then what we would do is to request of the state that we modify our fiscal year 22. So the budget that's getting ready to go into effect July 1st, we would request to have those two projects added back in. The idea for this is that it will give us more time to rebid these projects after the market stabilizes and gets back to the budget numbers that we anticipate. We think we saw a, a crazy ebb in the construction industry and that's the result. We've talk to the vendors that submitted and that's the feedback that they've given us. Number one, they didn't know if the materials were going to get here on time. Number two, they didn't know what kind of cost impact it was going to be so they bid really high just to make sure that they weren't way out of line and they were concerned that these were summer projects and they wouldn't be able to get them done for us on time. So we believe that if we wait until the fall or the winter and we bid potentially for next summer, we'll see better numbers that will fall more in line with our budget. So if we rescind it in a motion, we would also have to state to have those mon monies put into reserve account for QACPS? Yes. Okay. The, 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 Just clarifying to make sure. State funding as well. Was it? That is, it is a state would, and county match. So we lose that by... We would not. What I would still like to do, and we'll confer with Dr. Salins the best way to do this, but we also want to let the county government know what we are doing because it is a change to our CIP request just so they're aware. At this time, the funding from the county is still available to us. We just want to let them know that we'll be using it at a later time. So, I mean, I, and this Ken Island was a two-year project anyway. The roof Ken Island there. High School is a two-year project, and that one is still upcoming. This is Ken Island Elementary School. Oh, okay. So it is probably a three-month project tops. So the high school's going through. Yes, the high school has been funded. <laughs> and so this, the state would still hold our money for us just for next year, but pushing it back a year. Yes, that's correct. So if before June 30th, we let them know that we want to rescind it, it goes into account just for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. If we let it expire, then it's available to anyone in the state. So we definitely want to act before this, June 30th. Okay, gotcha. And then we could do the same with the county, It'd be less rigorous, but have them yes. follow the same policy and that will come to us on a thing after this gets approved. Yes. Of course, we've seen that the product is going still continuing to rise so hopefully we'll hold off on that bidding as long as we can because mm -hmm. you don't see it coming down anytime soon but lumber i don't know what the metrics oh are but lumber was like quadruple yeah but it was yeah. like two over two thousand and it used to be like four or five hundred mm -hmm. it is under a thousand now so it, it started to fall but you know it, it, it takes a while for that <clears throat> supply chain to get to catch up ca catch up yeah. yes uh, i think just are either one of these schools in jeopardy as far as roofs is waiting one year no, at this point, we don't have any roofs that are leaking. If at any point we see that we're starting to have problems, we could bid these projects in the fall. And because we've had very moderate winters lately, it's a potential that we would be able to complete them during the winter as well. And I'm sure it's not as nice doing it once. <laughs> well, students are in school, that's not. We definitely. So Bayside Elementary School, the one benefit that we have is it's over the public spaces. The roofing's over the public spaces, not okay. the classroom areas. So we have a little bit of flexibility flexibility there if push comes to I just, I, 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 with security and stuff I just hate to see projects doing when kids are in school if, if we if we can avoid it yes we do too and Kennel Elementary School had was rehabbed 10 years ago it's been, that it's been longer than that um, so that's why we have to have the partial roof replacement because it wasn't done at that time there are bits and pieces it's somewhat like a puzzle up yeah. on the roof there. Um, there were parts of the roof that were not completed during the renovation and that's what this will what cover. This for. Okay. Yes. So do we make a motion to rescind? Dr. Mr. Smith? Mm -hmm. Motion to rescind the FY20 state funding for the partial roof replacement projects of Bayside Elementary School and Ken Allen Elementary School. Modify the FY22 CIP request to include the funding for partial roof replacements at both schools with that funding being put into uh, a reserve, a reserve uh, account for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Second. Motion is second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Thank and, you. Um,
this will get approved by the state as soon as that happens. You, you, I will, yes, I will forward them a letter Dr. tomorrow. And then and Dr. Salem will talk to the county or whoever our official person is to get to the county to understand that. Yes, okay. yes. Thank you. Right. Thank you. All right. Okay, item for future discussion. Anybody have anything for the good of the cause? Mask mandate, do we want to discuss oh, that? Sure, yes, <laughs> sure, <laughs> absolutely. Um, so yes, um, so I've had an opportunity to speak with um, the health department officer and um, in light of the press conference from yesterday um, through Governor Hogan, he stated that as of July 1, he would be lifting um, a state of emergency, which did include um, face masks. And so they would no longer be required to wear a face mask. So um, up for discussion of um, the board's purview and direction as it relates to following that, the recommendation um, per the discussion that I had with him was that we would follow the recommendation of the governor. So that would be my recommendation um, upon his consult. And I'd like to see um, the board's discussion on that. I would agree with your uh, recommendation. I think it's time for us to, on July 1, to, if they want to, to ditch those masks. So no question. Okay. And my understanding is it's up to the local board to make this decision. That, um, that's true. And mm -hmm. it, we still, we would not require a mask. Anybody feels would they need to wear a mask, they still personally could wear one, but it's not gonna be required. Absolutely. Have and we talked to the bargaining units about this? I have not. I have not. It was just happened yesterday. Um, and so I have not had an opportunity to do that. Um, again, it would be something that would be, uh, you know, voluntary if, if mm -hmm. a student or staff member wanted to wear a mask. Um, they are certainly encouraged and, and welcome to do so. Yeah, I don't, um, matter I of fact, not, anybody yeah, who um, anybody who wasn't vaccinated as an adult, a staff member, um, I would encourage them to to get vaccinated. And if they're not, then to wear their mask. Absolutely. Um, so. so at this point, after July 1st, it, there's no masks unless it's voluntary. And um, do we need to vote on that? I think we need a motion. That's going to be right. on that. I mean, the governor, it, he publicly said mm -hmm. that he was putting that decision back on the boards of eds across the state of Maryland. Right. Um, you know, as the superintendent sitting as part of that group, obviously. Um, but yeah, he, he made that very clear. And sure. so, um, so do we so do 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 vote on that, that July 2nd, the next meeting, July 7th, no, or we now? Vote on it now. Oh, okay, let's do it now. Yeah. I would say, yes, yeah. I make a and motion. I did wanna, yes. I did, I'm sorry, I apologize, but I did want to say that um, this will not change our cleaning protocols. That would be my recommendation because we really have stepped up our game mm -hmm. as it relates to our facilities cleaning um, routines. Um, and so my recommendation, would we, we would still keep that at the highest of level, um, that the only thing really that would change is um, the mask wearing, that when at all possible, you do social distance. If you, you know what I mean? Like if, if there's an opportunity to social distance three feet apart from each other or whatnot, then I would encourage us to still look at that, that it wouldn't be a mandate to do that. But all of those good practices that we've had in place due to COVID, I would recommend we still continue to follow those. This would just be removing that mask date as a mandate. Mm -hmm. Certainly they could do it if they wanted to, but it would just be um, if they didn't want to, they didn't have to. Certainly. Then I would make a motion that we remove the mask mandate effective July 1. And second. Okay. Any further discussion? So basically we're gonna keep our same protocols as far as sanitizing, doing everything we've been doing. Um, it's an option if somebody feels uncomfortable, they can wear a mask, but it would not be required in Queen Anne's County Public Schools. And that includes summer school. I wanna get that on the record. Mm -hmm. And summer we will get included. a news release. Of, and this is effective July the 1st. We'll get a news release out so that mm -hmm. staff and- We have and a motion and a second. We have not had a vote. Got a motion. Hold on, I'm, I'm gonna do a okay. discussion just to make sure everybody's clarified on what's going on. Prelude. Any further discussion? I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, aye. 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 Okay. Carries unanimously. Thank you. All right. Okay. Our future board meetings will be, our regular board meeting will be July the 7th. And we have two scheduled ones, uh, work sessions for July the 14th and 21st. Um, do I have anything else besides we are gonna go back into, motion to go back in closed session. So moved. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. All right, thanks everybody.